Hey there, I'm Brie Cheese, and this is my introduction to Raksha Guide. Raksha is generally considered to be a pretty tough boss, but once you know what you're doing here, it's not so bad at all. The main thing with Raksha is each of his mechanics are very punishing if you do mess them up, but once you know how to deal with them, it's fairly easy to not mess them up. Because of that, you'll probably die quite a lot when first learning this boss, but eventually it will all click into place and the fight will feel so much easier. This is also a really great boss for learning prayer flicking and soul split flicking, so if you're not used to those, I'd recommend giving it a go here and I'll give some advice on that shortly. Raksha can be done either solo or duo only. When you're first learning this boss, it can be easier to start off doing duos as the DPSer to get the hang of the base mechanics. I would recommend taking the time to learn solo or basing and duo to really enjoy this boss. The only difference between solo and duo is that the boss's health and some of his mechanics scale up in duo. Each player does also get their own loot in duo, so there's no penalty for doing it in a duo. Speaking of loot, Raksha has a few very nice drops. The main thing people look for from Raksha are his ability codexes. He has three codexes, including the Greater Ricochet Codex, the Greater Chain Codex, and the Divert Ability Codex. Greater Ricochet makes it so if there isn't any additional targets to hit, the additional hits Ricochet could have done are dealt to the original target. With the Karuming perk, this means Greater Ricochet can hit a single target up to seven times, which works amazingly with Bacramental Bolts. Greater Chain makes it so the next ability you use after it deals that ability to every target that Greater Chain hit. This makes it a very powerful move for clearing groups of enemies. Divert ability is similar to the ability Resonance, except you gain adrenaline instead of health. These are powerful abilities and are generally worth quite a lot of gold because of it. Raksha also drops tier 80 boots for each combat style that each have a unique effect, and he also drops the Shadow Spike, which is used to upgrade those boots to tier 90. On screen I'll be showing a list of requirements and recommendations for fighting this boss. Raksha has decently high defense, so you're gonna want at least tier 95 pairs and overloads, along with at least a tier 85 weapon or better. There are many DPS checks that happen during this fight, so the better your weapon the better, but it can be done with tier 85. 5 as I'll show later. If you're going to be soloing the boss, Bladed Dive is necessary for dealing with one of the mechanics. Outside of the hard requirements, 96 summoning will be helpful for either bringing extra food in a yak while you're learning, or for bringing a ripper demon once you're more experienced. Vuln Bombs are always an easy and nice addition to your setup for some free extra damage. Laceration Boots are very nice and close to required here to increase your AoE range of your Bladed Dive. If you're in a duo and are DPS, flanking is a great addition to your setup since you can position yourself for flanking for most of the fight. Other than those specifically, just bring the best of what you have. There's not too much to talk about when it comes to roles here. Essentially, both the base and DPS have the job of pushing out as much damage as they can to defeat the boss. Some of the boss's mechanics won't affect the DPS as much since they'll be out of range and is kind of the only real difference here. The first thing to mention about Raksha is how he performs his auto attacks. Raksha will randomly use one of the three combat styles each time he attacks, but he won't use the same one twice in a row. This means if he uses a magic attack, the next attack will be randomly ranged or melee. His auto attacks are quite slow and have easy to notice animations, so reacting to the attacks shouldn't prove too difficult with a bit of practice. His magic attack is when he rears back and shoots at a big purple orb. His ranged attack is when he leans forward and shoots spikes from his tail. His melee attack is the harder one to learn because it's quicker than the others and it's when he perks up slightly and then goes in for a bite. If you're a DPS or in duo, you won't be getting hit by the melee attacks. If you've never done prayer flicking before, this is a fight where it's required. I would recommend adding your protection prayers to some easy to use keybinds to get used to changing between them. If you happen to have an MMO mouse with plenty of side buttons, I personally like having my prayers on there because that way prayer flicking isn't conflicting with me trying to cast abilities. When you're first starting out here, it can be beneficial to default your prayer to protect melee and then you just flick to either ranged or mage when he does that type of attack and then you just go right back to melee after. When you're more comfortable with that, I would highly recommend taking it up a notch and having soul split be what you're normally on, and then you just flick to whichever of the three styles he's using before going back to soul split. If you can pull that off, that is quite literally what soul split flicking is. I personally find the term soul split flicking to be a bit misleading 
timing because it sounds like what you're doing is to flick the soul split for heals. For myself, I find a better way to think about it is that soul split is what you default to and then you're just flicking to the right defensive prayer to block the next attack. Either way, try to get the hang of prayer flicking down here whether you go for soul split flicking or not. Now that we've discussed his auto attacks, let's look at how the rest of the fight works. Raksha works on a specific attack rotation, so everything is 100% predictable outside of his auto attacks. He will always do 4 auto attacks, then the next special attack in his rotation. On phase 1, the first special attack he'll do is his tail swipe. If you're basing, you'll want to make sure you're ready for this after his fourth auto attack and then move out of the way of it. You need to make sure you don't move too early or else he'll instead charge towards you dealing the same amount of damage as the tail swipe. The damage from this attack is large, dealing around 5,000 typeless damage. And if hit by this mechanic, you will also be stunned temporarily, making it quite a dangerous mechanic. If you're DPS in duo, you shouldn't need to worry about this since you'll be out of range. Four auto attacks later and he'll use his next mechanic, Shadow Bomb. When he starts this mechanic, he'll first stun the player. You'll want to either anticipate beforehand or freedom to break this stun. Right after stunning you, a green marker will be placed where you're standing and a Shadow Bomb will begin to drop towards the ground. When this lands, it'll leave a patch of Shadow Smoke that deals rapid high hits of magic damage if standing inside of it. You'll just want to move off of the spot and make sure not to run back into it while it's still there. This mechanic will be placed on both the base and DPS and duo. In phase 1, he'll repeat those two mechanics twice before doing a new mechanic, Shadow Blast. The goal of this phase is to lower Raksha's health enough to start the next phase before he does his Shadow Blast attack. This is because his Shadow Blast move takes a while to perform, but it'll also have him absorb from all of the Shadow Pools that he's been spawning throughout the arena this whole time. If he gets a chance to absorb, he'll heal himself and also buff his damage and reduce the amount of damage that you deal to him. Basically, this is really bad and should always be avoided. With some decent DPS, this shouldn't be too difficult to pull off. If you're struggling with dealing decent damage, I'd recommend checking out my introduction to dealing damage in RuneScape guide that I'll put on screen here and in the video description. If you do happen to choose to deal with his Shadow Blast attack, ideally you'll want to clear the pools before he uses this move, and then make sure to use Devotion to reduce the damage of the incoming blasts. Again, it should not be too difficult to skip this mechanic entirely and it is very highly recommended to do so. Once you've reduced Raksha down to either 600,000 health in solo or 1.2 million health in duo, phase 2 will begin. Between this phase and the next one, Raksha will first stomp around briefly while rocks fall from the ceiling. Do your best to dodge these rocks because they will deal a decent amount of typeless damage. You can also continue damaging Raksha during this part if you feel confident enough to do so. Again, Raksha works on the 4 auto attack then special attack rule. The first special during this phase will be a new one, the Poison Mind. Raksha will lock all players in place and spawn a minimum of 2 shadow orbs per player. The amount of shadow orbs spawned can increase if Raksha absorbs enough power from the pools. When these spawn, you'll begin to take rapid low typeless hits until you click on each orb to remove them. The orbs will always spawn relatively close to you and are really easy to deal with. If you fail to remove all of your orbs, Orbs, Raksha will deal around 3,000 typeless damage to you for each orb that's left. His next special attack will be the tail swipe from phase 1, and then he'll again do the shadow bomb attack. This time though, there'll be multiple shadow bombs that drop, but only on the base. At a minimum, there will be 3 shadow bombs, but this can be more if Raksha has absorbed enough from the pools. Deal with this in a similar way as before, but just keep moving until all 3 bombs have landed. Raksha will then use his tail swipe one more time before going to use his Shadow Blast attack. Again, you'll want to phase Raksha before he gets the chance to do this. The HP goal that you need to meet to phase Raksha to phase 3 is 400,000 in solo and 800,000 in duo. The start of phase 3 is probably the hardest part about this fight. During this phase, Raksha is constantly siphoning from the pools to increase his power, so it's crucial to now kill all of the pools as soon as you can. This is typically done using Bladed Dive along with Laceration Boots and either a Dragon Rider Lance or 
our noxious scythe. The reason for this is because laceration boots allow you to use bladed dive with a two-handed weapon and also gains the range benefits of a halberd ranged weapon like a lance or a scythe. The move bladed dive has a neat effect that you might not have known, but when you use bladed dive on a target, it deals AoE damage to surrounding enemies, but it will also refresh itself off cooldown if the original target dies shortly after using it. This means you can blade and dive to each of the pools in rather quick succession to kill them all. This can also be done with the vanilla version of blade and dive, but it's much more difficult because the AoE size is smaller. If you have all of that, clearing the pools is as easy as this. If you don't have all of those though, it becomes a little bit trickier, but not impossible. My personal recommendation would be to bring along a lance or a scythe along with a bladed dive switch. What you can do is at the start of the phase, run over and quake the first pools, then hurricane the second set, then switch to your bladed dive switch and do your best to clear the last two sets with it. This can be tricky, but isn't horrible with a bit of practice. The main reason to quake and hurricane the first two is just so you have to try and clear less spots using vanilla blade and dive since it's pretty tricky to do. You might have a couple pools left over if not executed perfectly, so just finish those up afterwards in that scenario. It is absolutely crucial to make sure you kill every single pool. One of the more common mistakes I see people make is assuming that they just need to kill most of the pools and then they leave even one or two alive. If you do this, Raksha will continue to heal and grow more powerful from these leftover pools. This is also the same reason I wouldn't recommend using chins to clear pools, because the pools can easily be spread out in a way that isn't ideal for chins, and you'll just have an awful time trying to clear them all. While all this is going on, Raksha will continue to attack you, so make sure you continue to prayer flick appropriately. He'll also have spawned a smaller dinosaur for each player in the fight that'll start moving over to attack you. You'll want to kill this minion right after you're done clearing all the pools, because it it will soon begin to do rapid high melee hits while also lowering your defense. The start of this phase will definitely feel overwhelming at first because there's just so much going on in such a short time period, but if you keep practicing it'll get easier the more you do it. Again, this is really the most difficult part of this fight and if you can get the hang of this part the rest will be cake. After clearing the pools in the minion, begin DPSing Raksha again. His first special this phase will be the Poison Mind again. Afterwards, he'll use the Shadow Bombs with multiple bombs like he did in phase 2. Then he'll do his Tail Swipe while also spawning more pools and another minion. These new pools won't get siphoned from until his next special, so if you feel you can finish off this phase before then, it's not worth going to kill the pools again. If you're not quite phasing him yet, you'll definitely want to stop DPSing and go clear the pools in the minion again. His specials going forward are just a repeat from the start of this phase. Once you get Raksha down to either 200,000 in solo or 400,000 in duo, a short cutscene will occur where the southern gate is opened and you and Raksha run through it and phase 4 will begin. Raksha will then become trapped in the center of this new arena for the rest of the fight. He'll also uber heal to double his remaining health. During phase 4, Raksha works differently from before. Now he'll do a special attack after every second auto attack. He'll also only use melee if you're within melee distance of him. It's also possible for him to use the same style of auto attack back to back now, so be mindful of that. Raksha will only have two special attacks he does during this phase. The main one is either his tail swipe or a shadow bomb. The tail swipe will be done if in melee distance and the bomb will be done if outside of melee. The Shadow Bomb will stun you here, so because of the frequency of him using this special, you'll want to purposely be in melee distance to bait him into using his Tail Swipe. The other special attack he uses is his Erebus Charge. When using this move, he'll begin to charge up an insta-kill attack and be surrounded by a blue barrier. You'll need to destroy the blue barrier before the bar above his head fills up to cancel the insta-kill attack. The health of the barrier will be shown on top of his health bar, but it'll be colored blue. The health of this barrier will also increase depending on the amount of power he's siphoned from the pools throughout the fight. If you feel like you're not going to be able to deplete the barrier in time, you can also stand behind one of the four pillars on the corner of his cage to block the insta-kill attack. After you either destroy the barrier or avoid the insta-kill, bits of shadow animal will be scattered around the the arena which you can pick up. This will activate the extra action button on your screen. If you press the button you'll become powered up by the shadow anima and deal significantly more damage. The more shadow anima you collect before pressing the button, the bigger the boost you'll get. Using this boost will be great help in finishing off the boss. 
The order he uses these moves on this phase is two of his tail swipes or shadow bombs, followed by an Erebus charge. Then, afterwards, it will continue as four tail swipes or shadow bombs, followed by an Erebus charge for the rest of the fight. Just continue to deal with these mechanics appropriately while DPSing the boss, and soon enough, Raksha will be defeated. Congratulations on dealing with that big angry dinosaur! Like I was saying in the beginning, messing up the mechanics of this boss are very punishing and will KO you very easily. But the good part is once you know how to do each of the mechanics, none of them are very hard to deal with and with some practice, you'll almost never get hit by them. Just keep on practicing and you'll be a master in no time. Let me know how learning Raksha goes for you in the comments and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those as well. Happy PVMing and I'll see you next time.